Hey friends, welcome to my channel and in this video I am going to discuss a very important topic for your uh, competitive exam preparation or uh, in general for your chemistry and it is equally important for organic and inorganic that is the organometallic chemistry. Now uh, I basically want to teach the things of uh, the cross coupling reactions and the other coupling reactions that is mainly the reactions but before discussing that reactions you should have the knowledge, basic knowledge of the coordination chemistry and the organometallic chemistry like the 18 electron rules, how the reaction mechanisms are happen, what are the stereochemistry important, that all things you should know. And so for that I will, I will start from the very basic, from the 18 electron rule and the structure of the complexes, uh, the definition of the organometallic compounds and so on so that. So let's start our today's topic. So uh, organometallic when, I, when we, I want to talk about organometallic chemistry first I have to tell the definition of what the organometallic compound is. So according to the definition when you have a, a coordination compound where you have metal carbon bond. So uh, let's say you have any compound organo, uh, sorry uh, coordination compound you know metal complexes so in any metal complexes is there it there is a metal carbon bond this r group may be anything which contain a carbon donor that is called organometallic compound but in this case you should note only one thing is that if you have cyanide ligand only cyanide let's say any metal and there are five cyanide ligands i am not specifying the metal but i am saying that this type of complex you have you cannot say it organometallic because it is by definition that cyanide also it has a donor as carbon but it is not classified as organometallic compound so these things you can read from any book these are very simple things i don't want to waste time on that uh, my goal is to uh, reach to the reactions organometallic reactions coupling reactions like Haig reaction Nagashi reaction suzuki reaction this for that what uh, what things are need, needed that things I will only teach and this first video which I am making now it is very important because this, uh, from these basic things also there are several questions in exam. So we, to, we told that what uh, organometric compound is. Now one thing you have to consider or remember throughout the uh, teaching of uh, or learning of this process is that any organometallic compound is stable when the metal has 18 electron configuration. We know this 18 electron concept of this 18 electron configuration, but still I am saying that 18 electron complex which is organometallic is very much stable. For example, let's say consider a case chromium. So chromium, you have a benzene ring, a benzene substituent. This is eta six. So this notation is important that whenever the six, six centers are attached to this chromium by their pi bond. This is called eta six. This is this is a notation. This is called hepticity. If, uh, for example, any metal and you have same benzene ring, but uh, only only let's say uh, these uh, four centers are added. So now this is called eta four. So how many centers are directly attached to this metal? That is called the hepticity of the ligand. So for that uh, here chromium, the benzene is contributing six electron, and you know chromium itself has six electrons, so twelve. And now uh, let's say you have uh, so six and six twelve. Now you have another three uh, cyanide ligands. Or let's say you have three carbonyl groups. Okay. So this. Now you can see uh, if uh, three carbonyl groups are there, so they each will contribute uh, two, two, and two. So that means six. So it is eighteen electron. So this is why this eighteen electron complex is very much stable. Okay. let's say now you remove one carbonyl from here now it becomes 16 electron and this complex will not be stable so whenever you have 18 electron complex it will be very much stable that is point number one 
for example uh, you have palladium and four phosphine ligands here again if you count the electrons the palladium will contribute 10 ele 10 electrons and each uh, phosphine two so eight that is 18 electrons so it is stable now uh, there are cases where 16 electron complexes are also very much stable but it is only for square planar complex any octahedral complex or in general 18 electron complex are very much stable but for palladium nickel for them 16 electron complex are also stable and for example this palladium here you have uh, acetonitrile group and 2 cl so in this case palladium 10 electron then each cl will contribute to 1 so 1 plus 1 2 and they will contribute 2 to 4 so in this case you can see 16 if this is 16 electron complex but still it is stable so how the stabilities are coming you can uh, look into that by considering their molecular orbital diagram or uh, in simple way i can say that for 18 electron complex all the bonding molecular orbitals are filled and uh, for if you give less than 18 electron in case of octahedral complex i am saying all the bonding orbitals are filled if you give more than 18 electron that will occupy the anti-bonding orbital and if you give less than 18 electron that will left the sum of the bonding orbital vacant so each way you are losing your stability for 16 electron complex in the same way if you consider the molecular orbital diagram for a 16 electron complex you will see that for 16 electron all the bonding molecular orbitals are filled and that will give the maximum stability and for 18 electron uh, complex uh, in more easier way you can think that if you are giving 18 electron then the metal will achieve its noble gas uh, configuration that is all the S orbitals are filled, all the P orbitals are filled and all the D orbitals are filled. So that's why it is stable. Now, uh, we, we discussed the stability of the atrium electron complex. So after that, one thing I have to discuss about this organoleptic compound is that this organoleptic compounds are stabilized by back bonding. Okay, what is mean by back bonding? So you can see in any organoleptic compounds, they are the metals are generally of low oxidation state either 0 or 1 or maximum 2 and also the ligands which are present like carbonyl or phosphine or cyanide or any pi ligand pi bonding ligand so they all have acceptability what is that so in general any ligand let's say i consider a carbonyl ligand so carbonyl ligand will form a sigma bond with the metal this is a sigma bond where the carbonyl is giving two electrons to the metal so we can represent it by this arrow so in this case the electron is coming from carbon to metal so that will make this metal center electron rich now the metal also has d orbital and they contain electron and any lobes of this d orbital will be parallel to the carbonyl pi star orbital so you can see this is the pi star orbital of the carbonyl and if you now uh, assign the symmetry so you know this is this has the i symmetry so this will be the pi star orbital and d orbital also has the same type of symmetry that is, that, that is gerade this is called gerade because it has point of inversion so it is called gerade g so you can see now they can overlap and in this way the extra orbital which is present on the metal that is given towards the carbon and this is called back bonding so this is the reason for the extra stability of the ligands when uh, of the complex when the ligands are carbonyl or cyanide or phosphine you can in, in case of phosphine there is uh, there is no pi star orbital but there is sigma star orbital and the d orbital on the phosphorus and in case of any pi complex so let's say you have any pi complex so this is the homo that is pi from pi it is donating electron but it has also the pi star orbital that is the lumo and it can accept its electron on this lumo so 
there is synergistic bonding that is pi pi uh, sigma forward sigma bonding and pi back bonding is there so this is the stability for the organoleptic compounds now these are the basic things now i will directly go into the reactions of the organometallic compounds and first reaction which is important for organometallic compound is the oxidative addition so what is an oxidative addition so let's say you have a metal in zero oxidation state there are ligands i am not writing the ligands but it should be coordinatively unsaturated that is if the highest capacity of this metal of accommodating uh, uh, ligand is 8 then it should have 6 electrons that is, it should have vacant place left. That is called uh, coordinatively unsaturated. And also, its number of electrons, that can be 18 or 16, but it is in low oxidation state. And then, when you add, uh, react it with, let's say, any Rx, this Rx may be any alkyl halide or other things like that, or maybe a simple hydrogen. So, it will undergo a reaction where these two groups will add to, to the metal and the metal is now in plus 2 oxidation state. So, you can see it is oxidizing. So, from 0 to plus 2, the metal is undergoing uh, oxidation and at the same time, two extra ligands are adding. So, let's say for uh, initially it has four ligands, any ligand, I am not specifying, but it has four ligands and now it is gaining another uh, so it is gaining another two ligands these two ligands so from previous it was four now it is one two three four so pre uh, previously it was four and uh, uh, let me count one two three four five six now it has six ligands so this this is called oxidative addition so oxidative because it's undergoing oxidation and addition means two ligands are adding so this is called oxidative addition now this reaction is a basic reaction for uh, organic compounds and it is a very important reaction now what is the mechanism of this reaction so there can be two type of mechanism for your oxidative addition and i will discuss the two mechanism by considering a particular problem so let's say you have so let's say you have this complex this is iridium and two phosphine ligands are there and here you have co and here you have cl so first i will count the electrons which is iridium now uh, iridium means cobalt cobalt series and that's why it has 9 electrons. So 9 plus chlorine, 1 plus carbon, and all these 3 contribute 2 each, and that means 6. So it is 16 electron complex, and I already told that these complexes are, although it has 16 electrons, it's stable. But it can undergo oxidative addition because after oxidative addition, it will attain another 2 ligands and it is now coordinatively unsaturated because it has only 4 ligands so it can easily take 2 ligands so it can undergo oxidative addition and if you do the reaction with hydrogen you will give yeah, you will get this so here you will have hydrogen and now here you will have phosphine phosphine uh, okay co cl but if you do the same uh, if you do the reaction with this complex same complex with methyl iodide you will get this cl triphenyl phosphine triphenyl phosphine and here you will have co now, if you, if you look at these two uh, products, this one and this one, you will see the difference. So, in first, in this case, the two uh, the group which is undergoing oxidative addition, the compound which is undergoing oxidative addition, the two parts, that is methyl part and iodide part, they are adding trans to each other. But in this case, the hydrogen is adding cis to each other. That is, 
the mechanism are two mechanisms are different now this question is from csi net exam they give you this complex and give you this methyl iodide and you have to predict what will be the correct answer either uh, this methyl and iodine will add cis to each other or trans to each other or uh, other complex it will form that you have to predict and you will get four marks out of that so you can see this is very easy but for that you have to know the mechanism now when you you are giving methyl iodide so what can happen so you know methyl iodide is a very good substrate for sn2 reaction now this iridium will have uh, d uh, will have lone pair of electron or you, you can say excess electrons on its d orbital free so it can act as a nucleophile and it will attack on this methyl group in a sn2 manner so that will generate a five coordinated complex like this and here you can represent by a positive charge now this iodide can come back and attack here to give you this complex so in this case you can see the it should be uh, trans because uh, this five coordinate if you consider this five coordinate complex this uh, bottom side is only free for attack of this iodide so that's why it is giving so when the reaction mode is SN2 you will get trans addition but how this is forming so in this case the reaction is concerted so the hydride to hyd the hydrogen will uh, come closer to this iridium and this type of concerted reaction will occur you can represent it like this so both the bond breaking and bond making is forming in the same step and out of that you will get this so in this case you can see if concerted reaction has to happen it it has to be ceased to each other it cannot be trans and why the sn2 reaction is not occurring and because you know h2 is not a electrophile any electrophile uh, nucleophile cannot attack on h2 so that's why SN2 reaction is not favorable here and it is concerted reaction. So, uh, for non polar compounds like H2 or let's say you have uh, trimethyl silane hydride, these also can undergo oxidative addition. Here, one side will add hydrogen, other side uh, SiMe3. So, these also undergo like this concerted way. So, when you have polar substrate like methyl iodide or other. Uh, it will do the reaction by SN2 pathway, but when you have non-polar substrate, it will undergo the reaction by concerted way. Now, this is oxidative addition and uh, you have to know that there is other side of the coin that is called reductive elimination.